Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Pedalboard Breakdown. Today we have a very special guest with us, Thomas Griggs. He is a Berkeley trained guitarist, a phenomenal guitar player. He actually recently toured playing guitar with Intervals. And he is here today to kind of share his brand new pedalboard build he did with Casey on one of our new Alchemy 1530 boards. Are you referring to Alchemy? So uh, Thomas, overall, let's walk through why you put the board together. What was your main goals for uh, putting this particular board? I uh, have as many options and pedals as possible um, and the ease, the tiers, um, super helpful. We had a bunch of uh, pedal lifts before on the old board and kind of things were kind of crammed together. This is a lot cleaner. Yep, you still have your power supplies underneath, you still have your jacks you would plug in. Yeah, yeah. Cool, so let's go through, uh, let's go through signal chain. Let's start from the beginning, which I know is over here with the fuzzes. Yeah, pedal pond fuzz into the, the love pedal believe. And really, real quick too, um, these are up front because of buffers, right? They don't yeah. like to play yeah. with buffers, basically. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Then from here, we hop over. The tuner, uh, which also has a buffer too. Right? Okay, and that's why it's after. After, yeah. after the fuzzes, yeah. Uh, from there, it's the over uh, the rest of the overdrive. So the the dualist <clears throat> uh, into the precision drive and into the dual fusion. So really, with just these three, you have five different drive yeah. sounds, basically, right? So this yeah. one was basically a tube screamer, mm -hmm. blues breaker, and this is more of a higher gain. It it can be. I, to me, it's like a pedal shaper. It's um, like I think of that pedal as like the gent pedal. Like if you look <laughs> into like the gent guitar tone, a lot of people use that before um, they're they're super heavy sounds, and it gets that that um, shaka type tone. Um, okay. Yeah. And then where do we go from the dual fusion? Um, the dual fusion goes into the EQ, the boss, the legendary G. Can't beat him. Um, and then the boost. Uh, vertex boost. And you have that mostly just slight DB boost just to kind of push everything over the top slight, if you need like a lean tone? Yeah, slight DB boost. It, it it's just literally sounds like the, the amp getting turned up. Um, I use that a lot on gigs. <laughs> you need that little extra <laughs> yeah, extra yeah, something Yeah, I, I use that a lot. I get drowned out a lot. Uh, after the boost, we're going into the whammy. All the mod stuff. Okay. And this is like the big boy one. Yeah, that's all the bells and whistles uh, there. Yeah, a kind of unnecessary sometimes. <laughs> um, but it, it's funny to have because like you'll have, I don't know, I'll be at a, at a, a gig sometime and the singer will be like, don't stop believing, <laughs> but in like D or something. So you lose all your, your low end. Yeah. You know? Moving up to like because this also does direct pitch shifting where you can actually pick an yeah. interval or do like a step modulate and actually have mm -hmm. it in tune. Okay, click. Okay. And then the other modulations that we're going to the pod. Pog, pretty sure. And then uh, after that is volume. Well, this is a combination, right? This was the new volume. piece to your board. This is the volume and wah. Volume and wah. It's one of those things. I mean, you, I'm sure you probably don't wah all the time, but when you want to yeah. wah, mm -hmm. do you really want another treadle pedal on your board? No, right, you just right. want to be able to switch it on and off. Yeah, that's that's the thing is I don't wah the whole lot, um, but it's nice to have just, that option. Just in case you need. Yeah, to, you I know need it's to wah. not like in the right part of the yeah. signal chain, but it gets the job done. So real quick too, um, you like your modulation and pitch shifting after your drives. Kind of get a really thick, kind of fat mm -hmm. um, octave sound. You dig that? Mm -hmm. Cool, I like that. I know I, with me, a POG is always on one of my boards. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always gone through both sides. I'll put it up front to get it super crystal clear, or I just want it right after an overdrive and like really crank and mm -hmm. kind of get that you know, yeah, super, yeah. super fat octave sound. Real, real, real fat, yeah, I like that one. So from the wah volume, we hop, I'm assuming, to the last two guys on the end there. Yeah, the last two would be uh, the freeze and then the mod, or is it? The yeah, it's the freeze and, freeze and then the, the mod 11. And um, then we get the lovely stride yeah. tier, right? Timeline and then big stuff. Can't beat those two together. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of options. It's still compact. I mean, this is still you know a portable board. You can travel with it, but it seems like you got a lot of tone at your mm -hmm. uh, at your feet. And I bet this is your first time actually being able to see it too. So you yeah, have, you yeah. guys have actually been able to plug it in. So I think uh, in a little yeah. bit here, you'll be able to plug it in for us and kind of hear what this thing sounds. Yeah. Sweet. So overall, I mean, it, it turned out great. Um, again, this is a, one of our brand new Alchemy boards. It's a fifteen thirty to give you guys a size comparison. Uh, it does use the riser on the right side. 
and you are using an input and output jack or new alchemy jacks with it as well. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to hear it, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get Thomas to plug in and kind of play a little bit for us. respond to other people's pedal boards. So if you don't mind, we brought in a pretty cool pedal board with someone I believe you do know that you are friends with. This is a board from Tosin Abasi. Uh, this was a recent board set up by uh, Vertex and it's a pretty killer board. I uh, just want to kind of get your response to the signal chain. And again, I know uh, you've probably played and you've probably played through his older board and want to get your response to what you think about this particular setup. So we'll go through, we'll go through the signal chain. So to start off, he's going to uh, the buffer. And then from the buffer, he's hitting the noise suppressor up front, which is kind of interesting too. Which... Yeah, we will see in a minute. Okay, I will see apparently. And then from there, we go into the ES boss uh, looper. Uh, so in loop one, he has the Bogner Harlow, which I know he's used that one before. I've seen that one on some of his other boards. Yeah. And that's got the Rupert that. Neve um, transformer in it, or the transistor in it, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, he goes to loop two, which is the BEOD. So the Friedman OD. Uh, loop three is the, I think a newer one, it's the Vertex Dynamic Distortion, which is, where's that guy? Yeah, right there. And then, um, I wonder why he chose this one, but he's going next into the Abasi Pathos? Pathos? Mm -hmm. Pathos? Have you played that one? Mm -hmm. I have one at home, yeah. And that's obviously his signature pedal that he has, so it's gonna make it make a spot on the board. And then into another Vertex with the uh, steel string right here. So out of the, uh, well, so still in the loop, uh, we have a volume insert. Oh, okay, so that's going in and out from the return of the NS2. Yeah. That sounds like a Casey explanation. So the reason mean? he does that is so you can put, since all of the drives mm -hmm. are in separate loops, this allows him to put all of the drives in the noise room. By, well, why is the volume integrated? Oh, wait, it's not a volume. It's panel. not, it's an insert. He's using the noise suppressor as an insert yeah. to be able to clean up anything that's on. Yeah. That's smart. Clever. So instead of putting four noise suppressors in, it'd be fun to do. A big board. So back to the looper in loop six, he has his para EQ, the Empress para EQ. Loop seven, and this should look familiar for you. He's going uh, double Strymons for seven and eight. He's got the timeline going into the big sky, so some 
some cool overlap uh, between your board and his. And then also out of the looper, he's going into this beautiful pedal, which is the Boomerang, which in itself is this cool little toolbox of looping and sampling and all kinds of fun stuff. And that was like the go-to looper. Still is a great looper. Um, I think you said you played yeah, one of those. You got one of those. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So overall, really cool, um, cool setup, cool board. I like the riser being kind of in the middle, so you get your always on pedals tucked away, but still access to them. A um, little dip. So why is this a little different than Tosin's normal board? What are you seeing that kind of stands out, or you're kind of curious? Well, that's a little bit different than what he normally does. The Vertex pedals, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Have you played yeah. through any of his stuff? Yeah, I've I've played through um, the Steel String. I remember the Steel String. I had a lot of fun. Um, at Summer Nam one year when I met Mason and I kind of just like hung out the whole time. At the well, that's what Summer Nam was for, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was fun, but yeah, I played that one the whole time. I think it was great. Right on. Well, I appreciate your time, Thomas, for coming in and kind of reacting to some pedal boards. Um, again, thanks for uh, rocking one of the new Alchemy boards for us. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed some of those pedal board breakdowns. I am David. This is Casey, Thomas, reminding you, love, love your pedals. pedals.